Good morning. How's it going? There you go. I couldn't see myself there. Okay. Hi. My name is Jeanette Boudreau and I am the health promotion specialist. It's been a while since we've last saw each other, but uh, I'm back for a little while anyways. We are back in the classroom, so less, less virtual webinars are coming your way. Um, but today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, portion size and uh, how we live in a society today where all our portions are distorted. Um, so hopefully you can learn a little trick to kind of help you make healthier choices throughout your day. Um, so whether you have a job that requires you to be focused and alert or you're assigned a physically demanding military exercise or you're training for a fitness test or a competition or you sit at a desk, it, it, it all doesn't, it matters, but when it comes to food, the food you eat every day has a great effect on your mental and physical performance <clears throat> for your training and for your focus, your, your thinking, your, your patterns. Um, productivity. Everyday eating has more effect on your and than your meal that you eat just before a performance or a sport. So what your what we call that is called the foundation of nutrition. So your everyday eating has more of an impact of what you're eating at the moment per se. Can I go next? So, but before I continue, this uh, information was uh, brought. I put this information, this briefing together. Um, is taken by our top fuel and top performance and weight wellness lifestyle courses. All of the information comes from our strengthening the forces and has been researched by our national subject matter experts who are educated and have doctorate degrees. Um, if I'm not able to answer any of the questions that you may send my way, I will simply reach out to them out in Ottawa and uh, maybe they can provide a better clarification. Uh, the presentation you're about to view is the intellectual property of the Department of National Defense and any reproduction or retransmission of the slides contained in this presentation is strictly forbidden. I'm not showing you the slides, but uh, feel free to share, um, <clears throat> share this video. Just don't use it for your own uh, business and stuff like that and to, to sell. So we all know that the Can Canadian Food Guide uh, has changed. Um, but the, what's good about the Canadian Food Guide is that we don't think about, when we think of meal, we don't think about carbohydrates, protein, and fat. We think about food, pastas, and tomato sauce, and meat, and fruits, and veggies, and, and puddings, and stuff like that. That's kind of what we, what we do, why we think of that, rather than fueling our bodies with protein, carbohydrate, and fat. Hello, I have one person. Where's my kitty? Um... So the Canada Food Guide is an easy tool to convert the nutrient foods. It's already done for you. It's kind of divided into a balance. Um, once you estimate the amount of energy you need, you can count the servings of food rather than the grams of carbohydrates, protein, and fat. The Canadian Food Guide converts 45 to 65% of your carbohydrates, 10 to 35% of protein, and etc. And then you, the rest is your um, fruits and veggies. So. The one thing that's kind of mind-boggling is that many Canadians don't eat the recommended servings from the all four food groups. There was a survey, the Canadian Community Health Survey, and it indicated that more than half of Canadian adults do not eat the minimum number of servings from fruit and vegetables, which is seven a day. And I have to agree, it's, it's hard. It can be hard. And almost half of them do, consume the, do not consume the minimum number of dairy products. So I know the dairy products have, is no longer a, a source now in the food category, but it's still lumped within your protein sources. Um, and, and the other thing that's kind of scary is that almost 30% of the energy came from the other food categories, um, which is very empty in calories, high in fat, um, and they lack a, a lot of other nutrients. 30%, that's a lot. So there are essential nutrients that your body needs. There are six of them. And water, carbohydrate, protein, fat, vin minerals, and vitamins. And water is listed first because we need more water than any other nutrient. The human body is made up of 60% water, and we tend to take water for granted. And forget how important it is for our body to function. If you paid attention to one of my other webinars, um, if you're dehydrated, that can decrease your sports performance or your athletic performance by 20%, simply by being dehydrated. 
Okay. And so water is often called the forgotten nutrient. And then we have carbohydrate, po protein, and fat that is used for energy. The three main nutrients that are needed in large amounts and the vitamin and minerals are needed in small amounts. So ask yourself, are you well hydrated? How many cups of water are you drinking a day? The target should be about two liters, eight servings. And then when you sweat or you perspire and you exercise, you need to replace more. So carbohydrates come in two forms, simple sugars and complex, right? Um, simple carbohydrates are known as sugars and complex carbohydrates are known as uh, starches. Carbohydrates is found in plant foods such as fruit, legumes, and sugar, and can also be found in milk and yogurt, okay? Um, uh, so there's, there's all kinds of places, and we find them in our breads and stuff like that as well, but just remember that carbohydrate is not just simply your pasta and your bagels and your breads. There's some found in your fruits and your legumes as well. Protein should be about 10 to 35 percent of your total energy uh, on, of your daily intake. So protein comes from meat sources, milk and alternative, grains, fruits and vegetables have small amounts. Uh, it's ne you need protein to help build the and you're building your muscles. Uh, it's the building blocks of your body. Um, it helps repair tissue, helps with hormones, uh, enzymes, and helps carries. Um, stuff through help carries nutrients through your body a lot of times we eat a lot of protein too much protein um, too much protein will be converted into fat okay so the body can only use a certain amount of protein before it can no longer store anymore and once your protein uh, consumption is full it turns it gets stored into fat so some people think I have to eat more protein in order to build muscle or whatsoever. More protein is good. Well, no, too much of anything is not good. Remember that. Your fat, 25 to 35% of your total energy should come from fat. And I'm not talking your deep fried fat and your Kentucky fried chicken kind of fat or your deep fried. I'm talking your healthy fats, which is your omega-3s and your olive oils and stuff like that. There are essential fats. We need fat to help absorb vitamins and, uh, and other minerals. Uh, it also increases the taste in your food and provides flavor. Um, but fat should be added at the table. It's cooking, it's added at the table, cooking, processing, chips and stuff like that. Or it can be naturally found in your food such as cheese, nuts, seeds and avocados. The problem with fat nowadays is that it's found in all of our processed foods, right? So that kind of fat is the kind of fat you want to stay away from, the trans fat, okay? Your minerals and vitamins, you don't need so much, but your body doesn't typically produce them. So you need to get them from a variety of fruits and veggies and different foods. Your vitamin D typically does not have, and you can't consume it, so we typically get our vitamin D from our sun. If you are living in Canada, for example, or the north, um, the sun is not so much popular in the winter time. So often people need to, should be turning into taking some vitamin D to support um, your 400 IU. And um, we just don't get enough sun for in the winter time. Um, and if you are a vegan, uh, vitamin B12 is something that you should be paying attention to. So how much food do you need? That's the question. Everybody's different. We all have a different background, physical activity, jobs. How much food do you really need? Do you eat when you're actually hungry? Hmm. Some of us eat because we're bored. Some of us be eat because we're stressed. Some of us don't eat because we're stressed, right? Some of us just eat because it's so darn good. So when you're eating, pay attention to your body to your hunger cues. Are you actually hungry? Kind of thing. When was the last time you ate? 
if you're fasting, for example, or if you ate last night and don't eat until supper time, then you may find yourself getting into these uh, patterns of um, binge eating kind of thing. Is your body weight stable? Are you one of those people that can still fit into your clothes from high school? Or has your weight fluctuated up and down since, right? Are you energetic or are you tired? That's, that's a good way to sense if you are um, fueled properly. Usually that three o'clock afternoon when everybody's kind of down at their desk, it's an indication that you need some fuel. Your body needs some fuel. Not the chocolate fuel that we like to go for, but some, some kind of other fuel that is good for us. How do you judge how much food do you need? How do you know if you're, when you're full? Are you full every time you eat when you have to unbutton a button on the pants? That, is that how you know you're full? Do you full, are you full when you burp, right? Or like, how do you know when to eat, to stop eating, to be satisfied? So that you're not hungry 10 minutes later and that you're not busting out the, the pants kind of thing. Ask yourself those questions. Feel free to send me a message. I would love to hear from you guys. The other thing you wanna keep in mind is what is your goal? What is your goal? Is your goal to maintain your weight, to lose weight, or to gain weight? Everybody's different. So depending on what your goal is, it will depend on how much food you need. Typically, if you're looking to maintain your food, then it depends on what you're doing that day. If you're very active, you'll have to eat more. If you're not active, you're gonna have to eat less. If your goal is to lose weight, then you're gonna want to adjust your energy needs about 500 calories less a day whether it's 500 calories less of food or 500 calories burned by exercise or a combination of the both if your goal is to gain weight then you'll need 500 calories more a day in eating your food and the more active you are the more food you will need So there's an equation here that I'm going to try to explain. Energy expenditure is made up of three components that, is influence, that influences one another. You have your resting energy expenditure, the thermic effect of food, and your physical activity. Okay? <clears throat> Excuse me here. Your resting energy expenditure is the energy needed to keep you alive. Your heart beating, your breathing, repairing tissue, all the unconscious stuff that your body does automatically. Notice that, okay, so your resting energy expenditure is about 55 to 70% of a person's energy output. It's huge. Energy needs vary greatly between people and is high during growth and slows down about after the age of 20. After the age of 30, energy needs decrease about 3.5% each decade so every 10 years after the age of 30 right so ever notice that those when the older population or your older generation is trying to make changes in their diets or lose weight and it's harder well this is a reason why okay more muscular individuals use more energy at a faster rate than people with less active tissues like bone or fat taller big, bigger people use more energy than smaller people Men use energy faster than women because men have more muscles. Hormones are different, too. Even the amount of food you eat has an influence. So some people increase body temperature to try to excess carbohydrate. On the other hand, restricted food can slow down the resting energy expenditure. So there's, all, there's a whole complicated equation here kind of going on. It's not always that simple. Genetics can simply play a factor as well. Some people are born with a faster metabolism than others. My husband has a fast metabolism. <laughs> oh, I just took my coffee. I, on the other hand, <laughs> don't have a high metabolism, but I'm a klutz. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we're going to keep going. <laughs> All right. So the thermic food effect 
is about 10%. This is the energy release as food is digested and made into tissues. The heat from this reaches peak about an hour after your meal. Have you ever noticed that you feel warmer after a meal? Fat requires a little energy to be stored, so, small, so it has a small effect. Okay? Protein has the greatest thermic food effect, so that's taking a lot of, uh, it takes a lot of energy to break it down, thus causing a little bit of uh, heat. Physical activity. Physical activity is a var variable component of the energy outside output. Physical activity appears as a relatively small portion of energy expended. However, this can be deceiving. Since the interaction of the three components, this is how they influence each other and has a powerful influence. So for example, if you exercise every day, your resting energy expenditure will increase and the thermic food effect will also increase. It will always keep that resting energy expenditure revved up because you're having more muscles, you're using more tissues, therefore you need more energy, right? But if you are a sedentary personnel and you have less muscle mass, then your resting energy expenditure will be lower and it will be harder for you to break down the food sources. So for example, so one way that you can look at this to see how many calories you need a day, typically everything that you see on the shelves and stuff like that is based on when you're reading a food label is based on 2000 calories. That is the average person, but you have people who require less and you have people who require more. So that's just a baseline, okay? To know what you need, you're gonna do for a man, you're gonna do your body weight times 24, and for in kilograms, sorry, body weight in kilograms. And for a female, a woman, you're gonna do your body weight in kilograms times 22. For example, a man weighing 95 kilograms, you're gonna times that by 24. He should be eating 2,280 calories per day. A woman who weighs 75 kilograms should be aiming at 1,650 calories a day. There's the difference, okay? I'm wet, I'm full of coffee. <laughs> now, we're gonna look at, so that's just the baseline. Then we're gonna look at the activity level. Sedentary, light, moderate to heavy. I'm gonna put these slides up afterwards so you guys can don't have to write this down or remember this. But everyone has a different perception of what is the moderate exercise and what is sedentary. So I'm going to just review a little thing here for you. Sedentary means that you sit down most of the day and drive or ride whenever possible. You may be standing still as part of your work duties or house activities. Light activity, you move around some of the time, you sit for seven hours, stand for five, walk for two, and spend two hours of light physical activity a day. Moderate activity, you engage in some intentional exercise such as one hour of fast walking or running five times a week, or your work duties or work or daily duties call for some physical work. Your heavy energy, heavy exercise, your job requires much physical labor, including hauling heavy loads, uphill, heavy sustained manual digging and prolonged vigorous exercise, such as marching with a pack, running, soccer, sports, whatever it may be, okay? Don't be confused with the meaning of being active and the meaning of being busy. Some people think they had a busy day that counts as physical activity, it doesn't. It just means you had a busy day. Okay. And again, I'm going to post this online as later on today, but depending on your energy requirements will depend on how many of the food groups you need. For example, somebody with 2,000 calories should be aiming of eight to nine servings of fruit and veggies, a seven to eight grain products, right? Three servings of uh, meat and alternatives, two tablespoons of fat and oils, and one serving of the other food category. Remember how I said that most, uh, most of the people would get uh, their nutrients, 30% of their nutrients would come from the other food category? Well, here it kind of says we should only have one serving of the other food category. That's a, that's a big unbalance. 
On the other hand, let's look at somebody who requires 4,000 calories a day. They're going to go up to 13 servings of fruits and veggies, 15 to 16 servings of grain products, four servings of meats and alternatives, four tablespoons of fats and oils, and they could go to three of the other food categories. But they have gone up to 4,000 calories. They're burning 4,000 calories. They're training hard. So what is a portion versus a serving? Okay, a portion is the amount of food on your plate. A serving has been defined by the Canadian Food Guide. The serving sizes are small because the food guide is used up for ages two and up. Okay, just remember that. A serving, a portion is what's on your plate. A serving is what's kind of uh, de designed by the Canadian Food Guide. Two slices of bread. Would that be a portion or a serving? That would be two servings, okay, of the Canadian Food Guide, of grains and products. Fruits and veggies, okay, you want to go for 125 mils or half a cup is considered a serving. Except when it's leafy veggies, then you're going to go for one cup. Concentrated energy in fruit, like juices and stuff like that, a half a cup is a serving, right? Um, and you should go for 100% juice, not the fruit punches and stuff like that. Grain products. 30 grams of a grain product is a reference point. I was just looking at the bagels that we have in the kitchen, and that's 85 grams. So 30 grams would be less than half of a bagel, would be one serving. Okay. So you need to be able to read the labels. Often the labels are deceiving. Uh, it will say 30 grams. You'll re pick up a box of cookies or crackers and it says, oh, 100 grams of fat or, or 100 calories or less, right, for per serving. But then when you look at the actual serving, it could only be two crackers. So you have to really pay attention. Um, a small pita, a 16.5 centimeters in diameter, would count as two servings. Okay. 16.5 centimeters is about the diameter of a bread plate. Okay. A serving of pasta or rice is referred to cook, not, not uh, raw. Okay, so a half a cup of rice is considered a serving. A half a cup of pasta, spaghetti. When you make yourself a spaghetti meal, how many, how many cups do we have? And do we go for seconds, right? At the restaurant. It's huge. They're huge. That's what I mean. This is what I mean by portion distortion. We tend to want more food for our money, right? We're always looking to save a dollar. We want more, more bang for our buck kind of thing. But it's not always a good choice. It's encouraging us, promoting us to eat more um, when we shouldn't be. Okay. For your meat. A piece of meat should be the deck of cards or about 75 grams. If you have a scale, weigh your next piece of meat. Two and a half ounces. This is not much. I love a piece of steak. I, I, I do. I enjoy steak. And I have to tell you that it's very rare that my steak is 75 grams. It's usually double the size of that. Sometimes more. Uh, two tablespoons of your nut butters and peanut butter or, or almond butter. Two tablespoons <clears throat> is considered a serving of meat and alternatives and same thing for your a quarter cup of uh, your almonds and seeds so you can see how your meat and alternatives can add up quite fast your fats and oils should include an amount in every day 30 to 40 milliliters a day or two to three tablespoons or you could even look at six to nine teaspoons a day you're going to want to use vegetable oils, canola oils, olive oil, soybean oils. Those are the ones that you want to use. No trans fat. Your other foods, sweets and other foods. Okay, they make calories count and avoid loading up on them. They are empty calories and I know these, these are our comfort foods. This is something I'm working on myself. I'm working on reducing the other foods that I'm consuming. Um, 
Aim to eat foods from your food groups, which are rich in nutrients for your health. Some examples of food and beverages that are often high in calories and fat and sugar and sodium are cakes, pastries, cookies, granola bars, ice cream, frozen desserts, chocolate, candies, donuts, and muffins, french fries, nachos, potato chips, alcohol, fruit flavored drinks, soft drinks, energy drinks, sweetened hot or cold drinks. All those specialty drinks that you see at the restaurants are contaminated with calories and fat and sugar. Okay. They are often, all these foods that I just rhymed off are empty in calories and they offer no health benefits in eating them, but they give you the satisfaction and the pleasure of eating them. Right? The majority of sodium, 77, 77% comes from eating prepared and more processed foods that contain salt. So even if you limit, you think that you're limiting your salt, pay attention to where you're getting your food because it may already be high in sodium. For example, canned soup, a typical cup has 900 grams of sodium, milligrams of sodium. Oh, if, you eat, if you're one of those people that eats a whole box craft dinner, 1,000, once, I can't talk, 1,000, <laughs> 320 milligrams and hamburgers and fries your typical has 2,000 milligrams We should be aiming at 2300 milligrams a day of sodium and that's still on the high end So serving size I kind of talked about it already <clears throat> Now let's think about it more at the restaurant and dining hall or packaged foods like I mentioned, we are tempted to eat more for less money. Do you want to supersize those fries kind of thing? Be especially careful for package and chip and cookies. The nutrient information refers to the amount of fat and is measured in the amount in the listed for a serving. Again, like I mentioned, not the whole package. Okay. There's no such thing as a bad food. And there's no such thing as cheating, okay? So there's so many diets out there. You don't need to be on a diet. You just need to eat healthy, make healthier choices, and do one step at a time. Don't change everything all at once. Just small changes daily, weekly, monthly, yearly kind of thing. In a healthy lifestyle, everything is about balance, positive thinking, and moderation. It's important to allow for some favorite treats every day, but little bits of it. Restricting yourself leads to feeling deprived and usually overeating. I've done there, I've been there. Planning ahead for a small serving with your healthy meal can, and a meal plan and calories you can burn as part of your healthy eating plan. Follow the 80% rule. 80% of the day, 80% of the time, so five days a week, eat healthy, follow a balanced diet, okay? Um, and then the other 20%, allow yourself a couple of the other food categories, such as wine or a couple cookies, just not the whole box of cookies or a bottle or two of wine. That's when we tend to overdo it. And often when we drink alcohol, it affects our decision making, right? So if you have a pizza in the fridge that you're saving for tomorrow and you are feeling your wine or your beer, that pizza may no longer be there the next day kind of thing, right? Um, so we tend to eat out of habit. Think before you eat. Weigh out your portions. Am I actually hungry? Do I really need this? Am I going to be satisfied? Is this a healthy? On a scale from 1 to 10, are the calories worth it? So you're going for your other foods, make it a 10 out of 10. Something that you really, really, really enjoy. If it's a 5 out of 10 of food tasting wise, skip it. Save that, uh, save that for something you really enjoy. And savor it. Take your time to eat it. Get more bang for your bite. So I have a, a graph here and I have one piece of pie. It looks like a um, it looks like a strawberry cheesecake, for example. 260 calories. 
And then on the other side, I have five cups of strawberries, which is 250 calories. So you can see the difference. You can be satisfied with your small piece of pie, which you may want to go back and have more afterwards, or you can go for five cups of strawberries and be full after eating five cups of strawberries. So making changes in your eating pattern takes time. Take it one step at a time. Make a change that you can keep and stick to it. Often we try to change things that are, are hard. Start slow and start with something easy. Think positive. Focus on the foods that you should be eating. Don't focus on dieting. And be realistic. Be realistic with yourself. If you are a potato chip kind of gal or guy, it's okay. Have your potato chips. But maybe measure out a portion instead of having the whole bag in front of you. Simple changes like that will lead to big results. So I challenge you to kind of keep a food log for a week. I would like for you to pay attention. Just write down what you're eating, bringing awareness to what you're, what you're putting into your body, how you're fueling yourself. You could do this for a day, a weekend, a whole week, whatever. But the more specific you can be with your food log, the better the results will be. For example, I had a cup of juice. Well, I'm going to show you something here. A cup of juice. This is a cup. This is a cup. Let's see here. This is a cup. This is a cup. Backwards, sorry. And this is a cup. As you can see, there are many different servings of cups. So I pre-measured a cup. This is an actual cup right here. Let's see, I had a cup of juice. This is just water. So if you fill this glass, most likely you had two cups. This is what a cup of fluid looks like in this glass. A cup of fluid in this glass is almost full. This glass is almost full, where this glass was half full. A cup in this one will fill it up to the very top. Okay. Then let's see if I can switch a cup in this glass is up to there. Right? And then another one. So just to give you an example of what a cup can be different. <laughs> right? Take the time and measure. Take the time and measure out your foods. Often we eyeball, and it's, we get good at eyeballing, but sometimes our eyeballs get bigger, right? So it's always good to do a check once in a while, to just to remeasure. If, if, if you're new at it, measure everything. If you've been at it for a while, it's always good to do a double check to check to see if your portion eyeball is correct. So when you have your plate, what you want to do is you want to have half of your plate full of fruits and veggies, a quarter of your plate should be protein foods, and a quarter of your plate should be grains. Often we are vice versa, okay? For a small recap, you should be looking at eating three meals a day with two to three snacks, eating food every three to four hours, but small portions and good quality foods kind of thing. Your basic pattern, two to four fruits and veggies, two to four grain products, and a half to um, one milk and alternatives, same thing with meat, and then you have your fats and oils and your fluids. If you can have a snack that contains about two or three of the food groups every time you eat, 
then you'll be feeling satisfied for longer. Craving should be less. Check your meals. Do you have their water? Do you have part of all, all the food groups in your meals? Look at the amount of uh, fluids. Okay. Count your, your um, serving sizes. Are you hungry? Are you eating because you're hungry? Are you eating because you're bored, or tired, stressed, kind of thing? And rate your plate. Half of it should be fruit and veggies. A quarter should be protein or alternatives. And the other quarter should be grains. Plus, make water the choice of drink. That's it for today. I hope you learned something a little bit... Uh, I hope you learned something new today. Um, I apologize that I don't have any slides or anything like that. If we would have been on Demio, I would have had a whole presentation. But because we're on Facebook, I'm not able to show you these slides. So feel free to contact us. We are here. We, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you for tuning in. And I will see you later. Take care.